Hey freedom lovers, this is William Moore and you are watching Beyond the Ties That Bind. Thanks for joining me for this episode of the program. I pray that everyone is having as good of a day as you can possibly have, living under the shadow of tyranny and oppression that the United States government now cast across the country. But they've been doing that since 1787, so what's new? Well, now they are doing it to a larger degree than they've ever done it before. H.L. Mencken said the whole aim of practical politics is to keep the populace alarmed and hence clamorous to be led to safety by menacing it with an endless series of hobgoblins, all of them imaginary. Now, he saw this going on in his day. It was obvious to him. And it's still going on today in about 20% of the total population. There's about 20% of us that realize what's going on. That it's the federal government who has conjured up this imaginary hobgoblin so that people clamor to them for a solution, to be led to safety. However, there's 80% of the people that cannot see through this. They're nothing more than sheep. So you can have FEMA come along and convince or give guidance to states, counties, and cities to implement mask mandates. And now major retailers are doing it. Tomorrow, at every Walmart across the United States, there is going to be a requirement that you wear a mask in their store. However... They did not want to leave themselves open to any type of lawsuit in the future. So, when you go in and you're met by one of their black shirts and you tell him, I have a medical condition which prohibits me from wearing a mask, they cannot make you wear a mask and they will welcome you into the store. Or if you tell them, it is against my religion, I have a religious belief which prohibits me to wear a mask, they will let you in without wearing a mask. And if you read the mandates from most of these retailers, that's what they all say. Now they too are receiving their guidance from FEMA. You have Target, Kroger, Aldi, all of them, Kohl's, I believe uh, Macy's, following the lead of Walmart and following the guidance from FEMA that are going to be enacting these face mask mandates tomorrow. Now, some of them have already done so. Kroger, they followed the lead of Walmart. However, they enacted their policy uh, within the past day. Now, me and my wife went to a Kroger subsidiary today known as Ro Ruler Foods, and we were in there. We were the only ones not wearing masks. Then when we were leaving, a gentleman said, do you have to wear a mask in there? I said, I'll never wear a mask. So he put his mask in his pocket. I said, other people in there are wearing masks, but nobody said anything to us. So that's what it's going to take. It's going to take people with the intestinal fortitude to stand up against the stupidity because that's exactly what it is. Masks have been proven not to work. And if we go to, guess who? The New England Journal of Medicine and we read an article from them uh, which was first published May 21st, 2020. It says... We know that wearing a mask outside healthcare facilities offers little, if any, protection from infection. Right there. Little, if any, protection from infection. So, and then it goes on to say, The chance of catching COVID-19 from a passing interaction in a public space is therefore minimal. In many cases, the desire for widespread masking is a reflexive reaction to anxiety over the pandemic. And this is coming from the New England Journal of Medicine. Then, it goes on to say, 
What is clear, however, is that universal masking alone is not a panacea. A mask will not protect providers caring for a patient with active COVID-19 if it is not accompanied by meticulous hand hygiene, eye protection, gloves, and a gown. A mask alone will not prevent healthcare workers with early COVID-19 from contaminating their hands and spreading the virus to patients and colleagues. Focusing on universal masking alone may, paradoxically, lead to more transmission of COVID-19 if it diverts attention from implementing more fundamental infection control measures. Then it goes on to state... It is also clear that masks serve symbolic roles. Masks are not only tools, they are also talismans that may help increase healthcare workers' perceived sense of safety, well-being, and trust in their hospitals. Although such reactions may not be strictly logical, we are all subject to fear and anxiety, especially during times of crisis, even a contrived crisis. One might argue that fear and anxiety are better countered with data and education than with a marginally beneficial mask, and that's true. Uh, particularly in light of the worldwide mask shortage, but it is difficult to get clinicians to hear this message in the heat of the current crisis, meaning everyone is reactionary. Everyone is in a panic. They're operating under fear, so they do not stop to think critically. They're suffering from cognitive dissonance, and they're going by everything they're being told by the mainstream media. Expanded masking protocol's greatest contribution may be to reduce the transmission of anxiety over and above whatever role they may play in reducing transmission of COVID-19. The potential value of a universal masking in giving healthcare workers the confidence to absorb and implement the more foundational infection prevention practices described above may be its greatest contribution. So, Masking does absolutely nothing, nothing at all. Focusing on universal masking alone may paradoxically lead to more transmission of COVID-19 if it diverts attention from implementing more fundamental infection control measures. One thing that I do want to point out is I still do not believe and probably will never believe that there is a dangerous virus known as COVID-19 because this comes from Dr. Carrie B. Mullis, the biochemist who developed the PCR test that's being used. He states, quantitative PCR is an oxymoron. PCR is intended to identify substances qualitatively, but... By its very nature, it is unsuited for estimating numbers, although there is a common misimpression that the viral load tests actually count the number of viruses in the blood. These tests cannot detect free infectious viruses at all. They can only detect proteins that are believed, in some cases wrongly, to be unique to HIV. The test can detect genetic sequences of viruses, RNA sequence, but not viruses themselves. He states that these tests cannot detect the viruses themselves. And we have so many uh, different health organizations, especially down in Florida, manipulating the numbers. Now we hear in Texas, manipulation of the numbers. And then we have a... Um, I believe it was the governor down in Arizona who was talking about how refrigerator trucks were having to be brought in and, and used as morgues. And then it was found out that she was lying about that. Same thing was going on in Houston. They were lying. This is all to promote fear. It's all to, to promote fear so that the government can control you. Because right here, this is all I need to see, that this is nothing more than bullshit. Quantitative PCR is an oxymoron. PCR is intended to identify substances qualitatively, but by its very nature is unsuited for estimating numbers.
Although there is a common misimpression that the viral load tests actually count the number of viruses in the blood, these tests cannot detect free infectious viruses at all. They can only detect proteins that are believed, in some cases wrongly, to be unique to HIV. The test can detect genetic sequence of viruses, but not viruses themselves. End of story. I rest my case. All this entire thing is a scam demic. Right here from Kerry B. Mullis. He states that what is going on, you know, he didn't want his test to be used. He states right here that what is going on is basically a lie because we are being told that people have COVID-19 when he states that his test cannot detect a specific viral strain. So this is, this is exactly what H.L. Mencken said. The whole aim of practical politics is to keep the populace alarmed and hence clamorous to be led to safety by menacing it with an endless series of hobgoblins, all of them imaginary. I pray that m more people start standing up and just saying no. You know, we have a couple, uh, uh, a couple, a couple in Kentucky that <laughs> they're under house arrest. They are wearing ankle bracelets right now because they tested positive to COVID-19. This is absolutely ridiculous. I hope that everybody with, in the sound of my voice, everybody listening to this, watching this right now, would never allow themselves to have an ankle bracelet put on them that you would fight to the death and take some people out before they would be able to put an ankle bracelet on you. This is an attack upon freedom. We have freedom completely under attack right now. And, you know, as far as I can see, America is gone. This nation is gone. However, when push comes to shove, hopefully, something rises up from the ashes that's better. A voluntary society that operates by consent only. Not by coercion, not by threat of force, not with taxation, which is theft. That people can live freely. I'm hoping and praying for that. But the America we know is gone. I mean, look around. Look at how many stupid people are out there wearing a mask. Nothing more than idiot after idiot after frickin' idiot. Wearing a mask. I refuse to wear a mask. Nobody's going to tell me that I have to wear a mask because a mask is nothing more than virtue signaling. And if your virtue signaling interferes with my life, we're going to have a big problem. This is William Moore for Beyond the Ties of Bind. Until next time, peace.